Hey everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are back here at uh, Cape Canaveral and thanks to the now successful Jupiter or uh, Venus landing, woo buddy, we have 1026.9 science to spend. One thing I do kind of want to point out though is we have this long catalog of stuff that we are still researching. Uh, this list, it takes a long time to sort through it and the uh, improvement and the introduction of new technology is slow but we're getting there but I don't know if we can just leave this unspent so let's go take a look in here uh, a lot of these nodes uh, namely miniaturization already being researched but we need to uh, bring them up I know landing already being researched prototype space planes already being researched already being researched Mature solids already being researched. Yeah. So, really, it's like clicking through a bunch of these. Improved stage combustion. Ooh, N1 block 5. Uh, it's the third stage of four NK21 engines. 7.7 .7 meters. We can't even build stages that big. Holy crap. But I'm pretty sure already being researched. Large segmented solids. I don't know if we actually need those yet, but they do help us un unlock a bunch of other things. Anyway, advanced construction already being researched. Advanced flight control already being researched. Second gen capsules? Uh, yeah, I mean, if we haven't. Oh, yay! Point added! Hooray! Short term habitation. Crew cabin. Pretty neat. Science station module early. Planetary science equipment designed for use in repeatable experiments. All data must be returned to the surface. You can't exactly beam samples back and forth, unlike other science equipment, which records all data instantly. Experiments using this equipment may be repeated multiple times on subsequent crew rotations for further, re uh, further scientific value. Don't forget to transfer all the data to the RV before the crew returns home. That's really interesting. And I guess these are just uh, habitation modules. 90 science, that's not bad. Yep. Point added. Space exploration. Ooh. I mean, I know those say uh, non RP0. Oh, that's the stock lunar stuff. I'm probably not going to mess with those. Mark 1 lander can. Mark 1 lander can advanced. Seats 2. I wonder if there's a size difference. That's super interesting. Inflatable airbags, landing struts, my god. Mark II lander can, seats three. Oh, neat. Improved electrics, I really, I think we already have this one. Yep, already being researched. That, this is the long range communicators, the uh, radio isotope thermal generators, which I would absolutely love to have. Another Commutron? What's the range on this? Around, no, oh, approximately 580 gigameters. This is 43 terameters, though not technically supported. High power electrics gets us large radiators, uh, the super big solar panels, and a soil moisture sensor. Research point added. That's been added in. Precision engineering. I think we already have that one. Nope. Point added. We have it now. New science experiments. A Wow, this is a gas chromatograph plus antenna. Chromatograph. Chromatograph. Octagonal strut mounting plate. Super useful. Service bay. Oh, dude. <laughs> all kinds of cool parts. I've never actually gotten this far in the tech tree in an RP0 campaign. So all of this is really, really new for me. Refined rocketry. Ooh, a J2 Aerojet. Three ignitions. Solid fuel booster. A bigger tank that we don't need. Mature hydrolocks. KVD-1CE. Oh, the N1M. Proton and Angara. It's only... Th oh, man, we've spent the bulk load of our science. I wasn't even... man, oops. 
Okay, and this is getting into the KAS parts, sort of. Skylab Orbital Workshop. Eight people, my goodness. Orbital Laboratory. I don't know what that, if that's the same as the other orbital stuff. Some of these uh, technologies are completely new. So really, we're not getting into any of the new super engines. More science tech, exokerbal core drill, surface scanning module, survey scanner, comms DTM-5. Seismic sensor pod, impact hammer, mech jab improvements, probe core upgrade. Ooh, fly-by-wire avionics hub, that's awesome. Heat management systems, contains nothing. Oh, we got so much more cool stuff to see. All right, um, so what should we get? Advanced stage combustion, N1 block A. The first stage, 30 NK-15 or NK-33 engines. That's a lot of pogo. You know what, we're, we're gonna do it. Oh, it's already being researched. Cool. <laughs> and here's two nodes that probably need to be moved around a bit. But yeah, okay, all this stuff is getting out of our budget. Really? Well, not nuclear propulsion, but really if we research mature hydrolocks or refined rocketry, I think you need refined rocketry to unlock that, and then we won't have the science anymore. Oh, no, what to do, what to do, what to do. Ooh! I mean, this is more science stuff. Intelligent satellite, air filter. Filters oxygen out of air. Requires intake air in an oxygen atmosphere. Okay, well that's neat. DTM-7, 3.5 terameters. DTSM-2, 170 gigameters. Oh man, <laughs> too much cool stuff. I think it's probably going to be mature capsules. That gives us the TKS and the Mark II, which is kind of the uh, Apollo command module. All of that stuff could be super useful, although I guess we're not going to see any of this stuff coming out for years and years and years because of our backlog of scientific uh, or of research. Specialized construction. I don't know what to do. Mature turbo fans, F-100, wow, okay, yeah, the F-15E, F-16 engines, and then the F-404, which is on the F-A-18, that's cool, effective space planes, I thought I researched this one, you know how much I love my space planes, or planes in general, eh, uh, yeah. yep, that's it, <laughs> damn it. Uh, we can go ahead and do mature solids just to spend the load. No, we can't. Uh oh. Wait, it costs 120, we got 136 research. It won't let me click on that. Dang it. That's. It has a sad. 160, 250, 250. Okay, well, looks like that's going to do it for spending all of our research things, but upgrades. We have five upgrade points we can spend. R&D. Let's get some of this cranking down the line a little faster. And we'll go ahead and add one to our build rate two. Close. So how does that affect our tech? Yeah, well, not very well. We still, we're going to have this huge backlog for a very long time. All right, but I promised you guys a launch in this episode, so let's go ahead and get to the launch of our Mercury Explorer. Mark II. Do, do, do. The name me is ready, and uh, I'm filming this directly after the last two episodes, so if you guys have commented something, I may have integrated it already, just not quite yet. Uh, whoa. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. What the? Oh, I edited that. Dang it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. <laughs> this stuff, I don't even know what the hell we're doing with this. Um, duplicate? Yeah. We need to do that. And we need to rush it along a bunch to about, uh, you know, 35 or so percent. Oh man, how long until our Mercury window? 33 days. Oh, damn it. Yeah, that seven days really cost me. So now we need to rush build some more. 33, 31, all right, 28 days. Man, dang it. Are there any contracts we can take? Available is the button I'm looking for. Okay, science data from space around Earth. That should be easy. Surface of Venus, that's basically a freebie. Oh, I didn't take this one. Crap. I could have paid out really well, too. Dang it. Alright, we'll take the freebie. And we'll take the two sounding rocket contracts since we'll basically accomplish them anyway. Go away, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Mercury Explorer 2. And the fog is super thick here sometimes. And roll it out. Warp to complete. Oh, crap. Still 35 days left on its uh, counterpart. I guess we can save it for the next window in case this little guy fails. Here's hoping, right? Launch. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot to... We should be really close, right? Like within a couple of days. We can't really afford to just sit in a parking orbit because it's Hydrolox. Alright, well, we've made it to the launch pad. That's good. Let's bring this up. Two days. I, I think we can handle that. Alright, so... We need to uh, get ourselves aligned with the moon. That's our next step. Damn it, that's pretty. Set this target. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Rendezvous planner. 43 degrees. And we'll just let this slide on down. No, that's not where I was clicking. Ah, missed it. Only by a bit. I think we can correct for that. So, get our throttle set. Oh, no, no, no. This needs to be down here. I didn't catch that. Dang it. All right. Ignition sequence start. All engines are lit. Let's get these clamps off. And we're away. And hopefully we'll have significantly less wiggle. I'm starting this gravity turn way too soon. Let's not trash this mission. I'd really prefer not to have to wait all the way until the next window for this. But this is our first launch with clouds. I am super excited.
already coming through our first cloud layer, although it is a nice clear day here at uh, Kennedy. Ooh, so pretty. I might have to try to land on that sometime. Just kind of because. Alright, yeah, now let's start actually diving into this. Nope, that's the wrong way. It's half a degree or so. It isn't really going to kill us. Although a degree might. Let's bring that down. Okay. All right. Yes. Right there. Keep it right there. Alright. And let's start leading in. Now that we're experiencing a lot of dynamic pressure is a good time to make uh, serious changes to your attitude, right? Right, okay. Now that we're on course and flying straight and true, I will probably speed this up in post, and I will see all of you uh, closer to orbit. All right, we've got uh, two minutes and 40 some odd seconds to our uh, Apogee. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of coasting until we get a little closer. Not a whole lot though. Uh, say really? Uh, yeah, I forgot to lock those tanks earlier. And these have the reduced hydrazine or aerazine and N2O tanks. All right, let me just take a look here. All right. Uh, 0.67 thrust to weight ratio of 49 11 meters per second total in those tanks uh, So how long will it take us to impart we've probably got about uh, 1.7 kilometers per second that we need to impart So it'll take about two minutes to do that so all right, let's just go ahead Ullage these engines, very stable. Oh, no, 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 crap. Did we seriously? Ignition's remaining zero. It failed. We've had an engine failure. Son of a bitch. Of course, one of our RL10s has failed. Why wouldn't it fail? That doesn't make me very happy at all. I don't think we can do it on the back of just uh, just this AJ-10 here. And we're certainly not going to be able to gimbal enough to compensate for this roll. Yeah. Certainly not. Well, that's a huge bummer. All right, so. Stage what we can. Unlock these. And these. Damn it. And 
AG-10 has lit. What's our Delta V looking like? 4,100 in this stage. All right, well, we're going to have to do the maths after we are successfully in orbit. Which shouldn't take very much on the back of this little guy. This is proven to be a super effective, super resilient stage. I'm really happy with it, actually, as far as putting these tiny little things in places. But uh, maybe we can recover this mission after all. Wow, that just looks so, so much better. I'm super excited about having clouds. You have no idea how much, how happy this makes me. All right, 259 by 173, not the greatest orbit. Let's see where we're at as far as uh, hitting Mercury. Set his target. Let's bring up Mech Jeb and our Maneuver Planner, which we need to toggle around to make work. Pork chop as soon as possible. The lowest delta V, 5.9 kilometers per second and 126 days. Ugh, that's upsetting. It's still 5.9 kilometers per second, which I don't believe we have. Yeah, 36 in there and maybe a few hundred in the probe stage, if that. I think grand total we're probably looking at uh, 4,000 or so meters per second. But what we can do is set this thing up as a comms relay uh, and just get it into a good median orbit. Activate. Uh, we need to set your target as active vessel. Basically, that this is going to be the relay. Yeah, and that's saying that we shouldn't depart until we're over there. That makes me really, really sad. Why did I... I mean, that makes me really, really sad. Let's get rid of that node. Let's see... Well, if we're going to be efficient about it, we might as well go into deeper space. Right? Now, this would be going shallower, if I do remember correctly, and it's at our apogee or Perry G, so it'll be way more efficient. Do we need a relay down there? I mean, we could. That's about all she wrote. Let's just get it right, you know. Let's put it on a track for Venus. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get an God, so many lines, I need to start detonating some of these probes, right? Let's set that as our target. And just see if we get some kind of, yeah. We can, in fact, get on the orbital plane for Venus. So, this mission is basically scrubbed, but we're going to go ahead and do stuff with it anyway. Because we're here, we made it to orbit, we're a stage shy. That makes me really sad. But... We need to do something, I guess. <laughs> I refuse to let this be a complete failure, even though it's already a complete failure, thanks to that uh, RL-10. But, you know, test flight has a way of doing this sometimes. I'm glad I built two. That one's going to have to wait till the next window, though. Which, according to MechJev, is like 100 days away. So, 100 plus. So we probably just won't worry about it for a while. I don't know why alarm clock is telling us something entirely different. That could just be me. Who knows? And it's not like this is the most advanced space probe we've ever put out there. It lacks a lot of the new high-tech science equipment. It lacks a lot of things. Like a destination, I should say.
no connection. Will we have a connection come node time? That's the real... That's what we should be asking ourselves. Oh, yeah, certainly. We should have a connection any second now. Yep, yeah, there it is. Three minutes out from the node. Let's go ahead and start to ullage. Here we go. That's a nice wiggle you've given us, SAS. Thank you for that. Alright, and as this is going to turn out to be a long burn, I'm just going to fast forward it and let you guys enjoy the clouds. So, enjoy the clouds. And that's all she wrote for our, uh, basically our transfer stage. So now, for the very first time ever, a couple, it's time for our probe to fly solo. We're just going to keep it right here on our prograde vector. Dispense with that node. Eh, this thing flies pretty well. I thought that the that comms dish would certainly interfere with things, but it seems to be going pretty well. Uh, not so good at pushing all this weight around, but we're getting things done. Where is this taking us, though? Is the other question? Okay. Inside of Venus's orbit by quite a bit. That's fine. We'll. We'll go ahead and take that. How much of that fuel do we burn? Next to nothing. Oh, that's great. Also didn't impart a whole hell of a lot of a, uh, a change in our Delta V, but we do know that this little guy can fly all on his own. He's not offset by this dish, which really seems like he should be, but he's not. That's good. But, uh... We're going to have a comms relay. It's not very spectacular, it's not very sexy or cool. Uh, but, I don't know, partial success, can we call it that? I guess we can when it makes itself useful to some degree. So, uh, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I will... Uh, not that. That. Make this today's beauty shot. That is really pretty, I have to say. So... Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see all of you tomorrow.